This project features a custom 3D printed Mortal Kombat trophy shell paired with a basic NE555 timer circuit in a stable mode producing a smooth breathing LED effect mimicking the gentle pulse of a living light. Watch this video for detailed step by step instructions on how to build this circuit and to know how this circuit works. You will discover how to blend retro gaming charm with modern electronics to create a stunning attention grabbing masterpiece. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay specializes in manufacturing of very high quality, low volume colored PCBs at a very budgetary price. In addition to standard PCBs, you can also order advanced PCBs, aluminium PCBs, rigid flex PCBs. They also provide PCB assembly and other related services which can meet your need to the greatest extent. I designed this project's 3D model using Blender. You can either create your own model or download my STL files from platforms like Thingiverse, Printables or Curls 3D and then print it using PLA or any other filament of your choice. 3D printing is a highly addictive hobby. There are so many things you can do using a 3D printer. From designing 3D models to printing them using 3D printer has now become my new hobby. I have been a maker since I was 10 years old and have always constructed and made my own stuff. 3D printing for me is a blessing. I am totally lost in the 3D printing's heaven. 3D printing has changed my electronics workshop life forever. Before when I used to order parts, I always used to wonder if this part would fit into my project resource or not. But after I got my 3D printer, it does not matter at all. Because if it doesn't fit, I could design and print it myself. The 3D printer was definitely the missing piece from my electronics workshop. To achieve gentle, diffused lighting for this project, I repurposed the semi-transparent plastic of a milk bottle to evenly scatter light and to eliminate glare. Using acrylic colors, I painted the body of the trophy. The trophy's antique character came to life through strategic dry brushing with earthy browns and muted blues. Once dry, I will superglue the plastic cutouts to the back of the front bit. For this tutorial you need 1 555 timer IC, 1 47 kilo ohm resistor, 1 220 ohm resistor, 1 BC 548 NPN transistor, 1 33 microfarad capacitor and few blue LEDs. The heart of this circuit is the 555 timer IC. Pin number 1 of the IC is connected to ground. By connecting pin number 2 and 6 of the 555 timer IC, we put the IC in A stable mode. In A stable mode, the 555 timer IC acts as an oscillator, re triggering itself, generating square waves from output pin pin number 3. Three other components connect to this junction. First one is the 33 microfarad capacitor. The positive pin of the capacitor connects to this junction and the negative pin is grounded. Second one is the 47 kilo ohm resistor. One of its legs connects to this junction and the other leg is connected to the output pin, pin number 3 of the IC. Third one is the base of the BC548 NPN transistor. The collector of the transistor along with pin number 8 and 4 of the IC connects to the positive terminal of the battery. The LED along with its current limiting resistor is connected to the emitter of the transistor. That's it. As simple as that. Alright, now I am going to demonstrate how this circuit works with the help of an animation. When pin number 2 of the IC detects voltage less than one third of the supply voltage, it turns on the output on pin number 3. And when pin number 6 detects voltage more than two third of the supply voltage, it turns off the output. This is how the trigger pin pin number 2 and the threshold pin pin number 6 of the 555 timer IC senses voltage and controls the output at pin number 3. The capacitor attached to the circuit will be in discharge state immediately after firing up the circuit. So the voltage at pin number 2 will be 0 volts which is less than one third of the supply voltage. This will turn on the output on pin number 3. Since pin number 3 is looped back to pin number 2, it will start charging the capacitor via the 47 kilo ohm resistor. At the same time, the base current of the transistor will also increase causing the LED to slowly fade in. Once the voltage across the capacitor crosses two-third of the supply voltage, pin number 6 turns off the output. 
This causes the capacitor to slowly discharge, causing the base current to fall and hence the LED starts fading out. Once the voltage across the capacitor falls below one third of the supply voltage, pin number 2 turns on the output and the above cycle continues. You can hook up a multimeter to the circuit to measure the charging and discharging of the capacitor. So here is a quick demo on a breadboard. In the current setup, I have a 33 mark fat capacitor and a blue LED on the breadboard. Replacing the 33 mark fat capacitor with a 100 mark fat capacitor makes the LED fade in and out slower as the 100 mark fat capacitor charges and discharges slower than the 33 mark fat capacitor. Also by replacing the blue LED with a red LED, we can make the LED to stay on longer than the blue one with the same value of capacitor. This is because the forward voltage of the blue LED is higher than that of the red LED. Forward voltage is the minimum amount of voltage that is required to allow an electrical component to turn on. The red, green and yellow LEDs have relatively low forward voltage ranging from 1.6 to 2.2 volts and hence stay on longer when the capacitor slowly charges or discharges. However, blue and white LEDs start conducting from 2.5 to 4 volts and hence when the discharging capacitor voltage hits the threshold, the LED turns off faster than the other colors. I have provided a link of how the forward voltage works in the description below. If you connect few LEDs in series, the forward voltage adds up and hence it will require more voltage to turn on the LEDs. You need to add a current limiting resistor between the emitter of the transistor and the LED to avoid an internal short circuit inside the LED. To make it easy for you guys, I have created this tiny little 555 LED fader module. After assembling the components, you just need to power this module by providing a voltage between 5V to 15V to fade the LED. So this is how my board looks like in 2D and 3D. There are 16 breakout boards in this 100cm by 100cm assembly. You can download the Gerber file from the link provided in the description below and order it from PCBWay. Let me quickly show you guys how to assemble the components to this custom made board. Let's start by sorting the IC base to the board. Then let's solder the two resistors to the board. Next, let's solder the capacitor followed by the transistor to the board. Then let's solder the LED socket and power socket to the board. You can either solder a pair of female pin header or male pin header or solder a pair of wires directly to the board to power this module. Once done, let's insert the 555 timer IC to the IC base. Cool, so this is how the module finally looks like. You can install female pin headers in place of the LED or capacitor if you want to use this as a development or testing board instead of a module. Alright, it's time for me to put everything together. First, let's glue the plastic cutouts to the back of the front bit. Once that's done, I am adding aluminium foil to the back section to boost reflection inside the box. Next, let's solder a wire from the breakout board to the USB-C charging port. Then let's attach all the 5 LEDs to the circuit board, including a red LED on the 5V input for the dragon's eye. Once everything is in place, I carefully hot glued each LED to the back of the unit. Once that was all set, I super glued the top part to the bottom part. Finally, I mounted the whole assembly on a wooden base to complete my setup. So this is how my final setup looks like. Feel free to leave a feedback or suggestion in the comments if you see any room for improvement. Thanks again for watching this video, I hope it helps you. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. Thanks, see you again in my next video. Bye now.